uh, so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, I want to thank Council President Pro Tem Liz Brown, uh, Interim Director of Columbus Recreation and Parks uh, Department Paul Rakowski, and Columbus School Board President and Recreation and Parks Commissioner Jennifer Adair for joining us uh, this afternoon to share some words with you about summer programming. I want to thank you for joining us today as we present the first steps to restarting some of the critical programs provided by Columbus Recreation and Parks. Columbus is America's opportunity city, and when presented with a challenge, we rise above it all with Columbus residents top of mind. The coronavirus pandemic has thrown many Columbus families a huge curveball. This devastating virus has impacted plans for family gatherings, graduations, and public celebrations. It also affected how the city can offer summer programming, which we know serves a vital, vital role in our community. As a city, the health and safety of residents and our employees must be the top priority. Over the past several weeks, the Columbus Recreation and Parks Department has consulted with Dr. Roberts and the team at Columbus Public Health regarding methods for safely reopening programs and facilities, especially those services that are a lifeline for our residents. I know families in our city's youth depend on the department's summer programming. It's why the department is using a careful, deliberate approach to restore access to as many facilities and programs as soon as possible. Our goal is to offer quality programming safely. The department looked at every program and facility to see how they could make them available. I'm pleased to announce that beginning June 15th, a number of summer programs, camps and classes will be offered with adjusted group sizes and formats. Popular summer camp programs like archery, hiking, fitness, and art camp will continue to provide a resource for Columbus's families to experience summer traditions that make our neighborhoods great. In a moment, Dr. Rakow or Director Rakowski will give you more details. Unfortunately, large public events this summer are simply not possible while practicing social distancing and other safety measures to continue to slow the spread of COVID-19. Two of the city's signature summer events, two of my favorites, the Jazz and Rib Fest and the African American Cultural Festival, unfortunately, have to be canceled. Finally, I understand the importance of accessing healthy and nutritious meals for the kids under the age of 18. The Columbus Recreation and Parks Department serves as the largest summer meal provider in the state of Ohio. And we will continue to work with key partners across the community to ensure that this essential need continues under the summer meal program, known more commonly in our neighborhoods as Go Lunch. I'm proud that the city will continue to be able to offer families much needed recreational programming that will keep our kids healthy and safe. To speak more about the safety protocols and guidelines the department will be implementing this summer is Council President uh, Pro Tem Liz Brown. And I wanna thank Council Member uh, Liz Brown um, uh, from the outset has been committed to working with us to figure out a way how we can reach our young people in a safe and healthy way. One of the ideas she shared with me just this week, we'll talk a little bit further on about extending our programming offerings with trusted community partners. We know space is gonna be an issue and uh, working with our trusted community partners, uh, potentially the YM, the YW, the Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, folks that we have a history of working with and potentially making CARES Act dollars available to those folks that, so that we can reach more children safely this summer. So I wanna thank Council Member Brown for that idea and, and her continued partnership in all this work. Council Member Brown. 
Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, that is, that's exactly why, why we're all here, to find as many avenues as we can for um, enrichment for our youth this summer. I am so happy to join you um, and the uh, interim director and the commissioner slash school board member um, here today because this is such an important, important announcement for Columbus's youth and families. As we navigate the ongoing and unfolding global health threat, we cannot forget about residents who are affected by COVID-19 without ever being infected. That's all of us, right? So that means while we will never compromise the health of our residents, we will build every single avenue we can to support options for working families and enrichment for our youth. Youth and families already have sacrificed a great deal with the upending of traditional school for more than two months. And now summer is upon us. It's a critical time of year, especially for working families, finding enriching activities that nourish the bodies and minds of our kids while school is out. It's always a complex challenge, but during this public health emergency, it's even more complex. And the need is even greater for high quality and safe programming. It's more apparent than ever with so many kids and families staying at home that we have to chart opportunities to support them. As Mayor Ginther stated, our top priority is the health and safety of our residents. I am so excited that our city has pulled together innovative, op innovative options for summer while placing the health and safety of our community first. I know that the recreation and parks staff and team have really pulled together um, and done incredible work to put together a solid plan we can provide for the community. Using guidance from the Ohio Department of Health, the department has developed general safety protocols in partnership with our Columbus Public Health. These protocols include the use of personal protective equipment, regularly sanitizing surfaces and equipment, and for summer, specific protocols were developed to address the unique needs of camp. The department will be providing some camps this summer. However, we know the need for summer programming is great and not everyone will have access to in-person programming, the safe, socially distant in-person programming that the department has developed. Therefore, the department will continue to offer a variety of virtual programming to connect residents with nature, wellness and creativity from their own homes and neighborhoods. I will add um, as a personal point of privilege that the virtual programming from the department I think has been excellent and I've been utilizing it with my family. There was an Earth Day virtual experience the department pushed out through an app and my kids and I four and two discovered um, many of the native trees and flowers that are in our neighborhood. Um, and I appreciate the Parks Department really thinking through every possible avenue that families need right now um, to try to get outdoors. The uh, department will continue to post virtual workouts, creative arts projects, and, and ways to explore what is living and growing in our own backyards, neighborhoods, and parks like my family and I did. Our future is dependent on the childhood kids from our community experience. And that childhood starts with having a safe space in their neighborhood to stay healthy, active, and most importantly, play. I'm so excited to support Columbus, Rec Columbus Recreation and Parks as they move to restart this critical summer programming. To share more specifics about summer, please welcome Interim Director of Columbus Recreation and Parks, Paul Rakowski. Thank you so much, uh, President Pro Tem Brown and, and Mayor Ginther, and thank you for your continued support, not just today, but obviously you've been in our corner. Uh, I know since I've been at the department and you've supported us just wholeheartedly. Uh, I do want to welcome everybody today. It's an exciting day for us. It's, uh, we've been working very hard over the past month, month and a half to get prepared for this day today. So. Uh, we are very excited and as everyone has shared uh, the mayor and president pro tem we are deeply committed uh, to the safety of our residents and our staff it's our number one priority it's been the priority uh, since we made the difficult decisions to close down the centers and the programming to keep everybody safe it's been our priority as we've moved through uh, this this very challenging time 
to get to the point to where we're at. It's going to be our priority as we move forward. But as important is what we've done to keep putting Columbus first. Uh, we've maintained access and we want to reopen many of our programs and our facilities as quickly and as safely as we can. Uh, those areas where it's been easy to practice social distancing, such as our parks and our trails, those have remained open throughout this entire crisis. You know, as a department, we believe, you know, our nearly 400 parks and 230 miles of regional trails are an important resource for the community at this point in time. Uh, it's also a great way for our residents, an ideal way for them to safely uh, connect with nature and, uh, and also to engage in physical activities uh, that are good for their own, their own health. Uh, while our centers are gonna remain closed, we're here today to celebrate the fact that we're excited to be able to offer much of our planned summer programming. We've modified that programming. We've changed some of the format of the camps, all of that to ensure the safety of our staff and, and the kids and the families that we serve. You know, some of these changes have been, you know, briefly addressed and mentioned. We're reducing the group size of the, of the kids that we're going to be working with. Uh, we're going to be moving to activities that are much more easy to practice social distancing when we engage in those activities. And then we've enlisted a lot of our facilities that we have in our portfolio that we might not normally use during summer camps. And we've done that to ensure that we can you know, serve as many kids as we possibly can, but again, ensure that social distancing, ensure that we can meet those protocols to take care of our kids and our families. The, for the families that have been enrolled in our summer camps, I wanna assure them that they're gonna receive detailed information shortly in regard to their camps in the coming days. Uh, however, uh, in order for us to do this the right way, to get ourselves prepared properly, to open this and to do this in the safest manner possible, we won't start camps prior to June 15th. Uh, normally, we would start those a week earlier. That extra week is going to buy us some time. It's going to allow us to ensure that we move forward uh, in, in, in the best manner possible. Uh, unfortunately, there are certain camps out there that we've offered historically that just they don't mesh with the current guidelines. They're, they're not a good fit uh, for those guidelines for social distancing, for the guidance from the Ohio Department of Health, and, and of course, for the guidance from our own health commissioner, Dr. Roberts. Uh, therefore, it's going to be necessary to cancel some of those camps. And I think that, you know, as residents hear about some of these camps, they're going to understand why we have to do that. You know, these camps include boxing, they include wrestling, they include our boating camp where they're, the kids have to sit in close proximity, our pre-K programs where we have a, we feel it's going to be extremely difficult to, to ensure that necessary social distancing with, uh, with youth of those ages. And then we have some camps that are by their nature, they're group camps, like our Lego making camp and our robotics camps. Those are the kinds of camps that we just don't believe that we can meet the guidelines and that we can operate in the manner that we want to operate. Uh, so those camps are going to be closed. I will tell those families that are registered for those camps, you are going to receive a full refund. We'll begin working on those immediately to process those refunds and we'll do that as quickly as possible. We have a, a process and a system already developed for uh, processing those refunds. And again, we'll get those moving as quickly as possible. Uh, for more information in regard to our camps or, or questions that uh, the public might have, I would suggest to go to the, uh, the department's website, which is columbus.gov backslash rec parks COVID-19. And that's for those individuals and families that have access to a computer and have access to the internet. We know that's not the case for all of our families out there. So we also have a number, you could call 614 uh, 645-3300 and choose option three. Uh, we'll have staff answering phones to help answer questions, provide guidance, and, and provide direction in regard to our summer programming. Uh, we also will be updating our website today uh, at 3.30 p.m. with additional guidelines on our website as well. I want to briefly address uh, pools and our aquatic, uh, indoor aquatic center. 
I know there's a lot of questions out there right now about what's going to be happening with pools and what's going to be happening with aquatic programming. Uh, currently, we're reviewing the guidelines that have been put out for the, uh, from the Ohio Department of Health. Uh, we're thoughtfully evaluating all of those options. We're looking at our pools and our aquatic programming and seeing how those might be able to fit into those guidelines. But as I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to continue to mention, the safety of our participants, our staff, and our residents remains our number one priority. And as such, uh, we're going to continue to work with uh, our health commissioner, and we're going to follow her guidance in regard to this. And in and, and our direction as we move forward in regard to aquatics and pools is going to be based on that guidance. Uh, we are monitoring our camp situation here in the summer is not simply red camps that aren't going to happen and green camps that we feel that currently we can get going on uh, fairly soon and, and do those and follow the guidelines. We also have some camps that we're putting into a category that's uh, a yellow category and those are camps that we might need a specialized facility for or a partner facility. Uh, it's also camps like our theater camps, some select sports camps uh, that we continue to work on those protocols in hopes of being able to, you know, offer those camps at a future date. And we promise that we'll be uh, in close contact with our residents and our families as we receive additional guidelines on uh, those camps. Uh, we are currently obviously in a public health emergency that's unprecedented. And you can imagine for a department like the Columbus Recreation and Parks Department where we pride ourselves uh, in bringing our residents together, helping them socialize, help, help them compete with each other and against each other, all in a very safe way. So this has been a very difficult time for the employees of the department because they live to serve the residents of Columbus. But as we be, can continue to move forward and monitor this situation, uh, it's a fluid situation. We continue to make changes as we move along to ensure the safety of our residents and our staff. Uh, we've used a heck of a lot of innovation and flexibility uh, up to this point to keep as many programs and as many facilities open and moving forward. We've learned a lot up to this point. We're going to continue to learn as we move forward and all of that knowledge we're going to put towards uh, keeping this all moving in the right direction. I want to speak briefly about our staff at the department. Our staff at the department here in the city of Columbus, Recreation and Parks, are the, some of the greatest people I've ever worked with in my 30 plus years in public service. We would not be at the point that we're at right now without the, the, the hard work of our dedicated staff, and there's been a ton of work to get to this point. Um, I'm so proud. They've been so flexible, and their commitment to serving our community during this crisis is the reason why we're here today able to make some of these, these really positive announcements. And again, their safety is important to us. It's paramount to me as the interim director, and we have implemented all of the necessary steps to keep them safe in their jobs as we move forward in, in reopening our camps and bringing people back to work. Uh, the department staff, to assure them and to ensure our families, they're going to be required to self-monitor and do health status assessments daily. Uh, they will be prohibited from working if they show any symptoms of the coronavirus, COVID-19. And as we engage with our, our, our neighborhoods and our, our neighbors, our staff, our kids, and our families, they'll all be wearing face covering uh, coverings as they work with residents and, and other department team members. And we're doing this not only to protect our residents and to protect our kids, but also to protect our staff. Uh, so once again, thank you, Mayor Ginther. Uh, thank you, President Pro Tem Brown. And it uh, makes me very excited to introduce our next speaker as she serves us in multiple ways. She's a steadfast advocate for Columbus's kids and uh, Columbus City School Board President and Recreation and Parks Commissioner, Jennifer Adair. Thank you so much, Director, and thank you, Mayor Ginther, for allowing me to be part of this important press conference. And again, thank you to uh, President Pro Temp Brown and all the City Council who continue to be great partners 
um, in how our entire city works through this crisis. So I have the unique privilege and honor to not only serve as your president of the Columbus Board of Education and working with all of our wonderful students and staff in the Columbus City Schools, but to serve as one of your commissioners for the Columbus Recreation and Parks Department. And one thing that we know about our students, and especially in this time, that mental health, social, emotional health is important. And while we at the Columbus School District have worked hard on providing educational opportunities and will continue through the summer with announcements of virtual summer school coming soon, we know that students coming to camp and being together is important. Studies show that when people can go out, experience nature, get fresh air, be together, to reduce stress and anxiety, that helps. And what we want for our students and our families is to ensure that they can reduce some of the stress that this crisis has caused them. As we navigate through this pandemic and we continue to focus on what we're going to do as a city, it's so important to keep this aspect of our children in mind. This will help them be strong learners. So I encourage you, as well as the rest of my colleagues on both the commission and the board, if you have kids any age, we hope that you and your families will take advantage of the opportunities that are being presented through the Recreation and Parks Department. Get out in nature, experience a program, get out in the world, because education doesn't just start in the classroom, it can happen anywhere. So we're really excited and I know that as a partner with the city, we will all help Columbus restart in the best way possible. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this and we appreciate from the Columbus School District being a partner in this. Thank you. Thank you, President Adair and uh, so grateful for your leadership on the Board of Education, but also on our Rec and Parks Commission. We appreciate uh, all of your efforts on behalf of young people and, and families in this community. There's no doubt that these are the most challenging times many of us have ever faced and hopefully ever will. But I'm proud of how this community has stepped up to fight the spread of COVID-19. And I'm especially proud of the work of the team at Columbus Recreation and Parks for their nonstop work in finding ways to provide important summer programming that follows health and safety guidelines. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, the idea from Council Member Brown to reach out to trusted partners in the community, but potentially offer more programming because of social distancing and the critical need to uh, have these uh, programs be done in small groups with uh, caring adults that have gone through, uh, you know, uh, the appropriate background checks and chaining and all those types of things, space may very well become essential. So we're having conversations with the school district about potentially using uh, school sites for additional programming, but we'll be reaching out to the YM, the YW, Boys and Girls Club, uh, COSI, uh, to see if we can reach more young people with CARES hours that have been uh, made available uh, during this crisis. Now I'd like to open up the conversation to our media partners to ask questions. We're going to use the raise hand function. You can see a hand icon in the bottom right corner of your screen. Click on the hand and you will see a hand next to your name in the attendee list. That's how we know you've raised your hand. We'll unmute you to ask your question. Please tell us your name and what media outlet you're with. After your question has been addressed, please click the hand next to your name to turn off the function. Obviously, if you have additional follow-up questions, please click it again. With that, uh, we'll take your questions. Any members of the media that have questions for myself, the director, council member, or uh, President uh, Adair. Hey there, this is Jesse Starkey with ABC6. Can you guys hear me okay? Hear you great, thanks Jesse. Okay, just a quick question for Mr. Uh, Rakowski. You mentioned, you know, some camps can 
um, continue with kind of monitored ways, social distancing, that sort of thing, but some camps unfortunately have to be canceled. At what point um, will people be able to know which camps will, can continue with limitations and which camps um, will have to ultimately be canceled? Thank you for the question. It's our hope that by next Wednesday, we will have informed all families of those camps that are going to be canceled. Uh, and in addition to that, obviously, we're pushing everything back one week. So that first week of camp is also going to be canceled. So our hope is to have everyone informed uh, of those cancellations by Wednesday of next week, the 27th. Yeah, do you have a follow-up question, Jesse? Yes, thank you. Um, and also, there's a we've been informed that there's some sort of protest going on at the Capitol um, regarding horse riding camps. Not sure if any decision has been made on that, whether it is considered a social distancing activity or not. Um, any thoughts on that so far? Director. Mayor, we will not be offering that camp this year. That's not in the portfolio of camps that we believe we can offer safely. Thank you, Director. Any, uh, any other questions from the media? Jesse, do you have another question? No, I'm sorry. I'm good. I, I don't know if I have to click this hand thing again or not. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Any other uh, questions from the press? Uh, Director Rakowski, um, what uh, I want to make sure that I, I mentioned that partners that we may be approaching in the community, I want to make sure that folks know that we'll be using the same standards, uh, protocols, and procedures uh in any partnerships that we might er enter into for additional programming everything that we're doing at our sites uh our expectation and the commitment to the public would be that those things so those same safety measures uh the social distancing, the group size the hand sanitation the washing of hands using bottled water as opposed to um, um drinking fountains no congregate eating all those types of things would be in place regardless of the partner, correct? That's correct, Mayor. We would assume that all of our partners are gonna follow the same guidelines that we're following to ensure everyone is gonna be safe throughout this period. Great. There any uh, aren't any other questions. I want to uh, thank everyone for joining us today. President Adair, President Pro Tem Brown, uh, Interim Director Rakowski, uh, and as the director mentioned, a lot more detail and information will be posted to the Recreation and Parks uh, website at 3:30 this afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, getting youth involved with summer youth, summer work employment, excuse me. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, we're not prepared uh, yet to share a whole lot of details with that. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure out, uh, there are going to be a, a number of places where that, that experience and opportunity probably aren't uh, going to be feasible this summer. Uh, many folks are still working remotely. Um, I know that it is the city's intention and the the county's intention and many other employers, public and private, to continue to work remotely as much as possible this summer to do our part to slow the spread, protect our employees. And obviously that would extend to young people that were working for our organizations as well. 
so not prepared uh, quite yet to make some decisions there. It may be a much more uh, limited and targeted approach to summer youth employment, but appreciate the question, uh, Ms. Jackson, because it is such an um, critically important component, just like our summer youth programming at recreation and parks to help give young people the skills, the exposure to careers and opportunities uh, for them to build their resumes, portfolios, but also their experience and skills to be successful uh, adults. So uh, I understand how important it is, but we're not quite ready yet. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, have a great afternoon, everybody.